Good afternoon. This is Charlie from Only PVC Pyramids. Uh, it's the beginning of a new year, and uh, for me, a little little levity here to begin with. A new look I wanted to show you. Uh, as of the first of the year, this is the first time I've been able to actually uh, get that hair back into a, a, a rubber band and uh, look a little bit more presentable to everybody. Uh, it's been since March 10th of last year since I had a haircut, so uh, it's a new year and I thought I'd finally see if I could do that, and I can. So uh, that's why there isn't quite as much hair hanging around the sides of my head uh, today and won't be going forward. But also as a new year begins, I've, I've, I've essentially finished uh, the information on the Russian pyramid research, which tells you a lot about uh, what pyramids do. Uh, what we haven't discussed in any detail so far is how does this happen? How, how do pyramids do what they do? And so it came to me uh, while I was meditating this morning. I knew I wanted to start something for the new year. And I'm going to start a new series. And that's going to be called The Fundamentals of Pyramid Science. So we're going to be delving into a lot of different areas uh, to discuss this. But... What it's going to require is an open mind for most of us who grew up with traditional science and haven't bothered to uh, uh, explore outside of what we may have learned in high school or college or even graduate school in terms of scientific theories. Uh, a lot of this is going to be new. It's going to be new in part because a lot of this information I feel has been suppressed in the United States. Uh, it certainly has not been taken up. Uh, by our scientific community, and I don't think it has anything to do with the quality of the science that's been done. So, um, one of the major resources that I'm going to be using for uh, backup information on this series is coming from David Wilcock. David has, is a, for those of you who don't know, here's his picture up now, is a prolific researcher and has done over the years enormous amounts of information on a whole assortment of topics. But one of the first areas uh, that he delved into in great detail and continues to do so is in the area of uh, physics, torsion fields, uh, and the like, and pyramids. And so when I started to read his information and watch his information over almost three years ago on uh, Gaia TV's uh, wisdom teachings, none of this made any sense to me. And as I've begun to, to build these pyramids and certainly have done experimentation and shown you the research of others, you know, I've grown more and more interested in being able to understand those basic concepts myself. So what I have done recently over the holidays has been to um, read from start to finish a group of free books that uh, David has out on his website, divinecosmos.com, which are free to the public, and they are called the uh, Convergence Theory. Uh, I'm showing you the uh, copies of each of the three books uh, as we go proceed on here. The Shift of the Ages uh, was his first book, and this was written uh, in the early 2000s and was updated uh, recently with a lot of new information. Uh, the second book is called The Science of Oneness and uh, talks about a lot of fascinating topics, uh, anomalies and so forth, free energy, uh, magnetism, uh, and a lot of information on sound, geometry, resonance, and platonic solids. But it all comes together in the third volume called The Divine Cosmos. But we're going to be using all three of these uh, books as references in our study. And for those of you who are interested, I think it's well worth your time, if you're really, really interested, to read all three books. I started with book three, and I have just finished books one and two. And I'm going to be going back to read book three as well, and books one and two for a second time, because there's just way too much information to grab it all. And that's why I figured it would be good to do a summary version of what I found that's relevant to pyramids in a video um, series. So that's what we're doing today. I'm putting up now the outline of the information that we're going to be covering in this series. 
uh, we're going to start with what is the ether. A lot of you may not even be familiar with this term, the ether. Uh, it's a term that has been in science uh, for thousands of years, but was taken out of our uh, Western science uh, in the last 100 to 150 years. We're going to explore why and also uh, talk about contemporary scientific experiments that have proved the existence of this ether. And ether is an important concept when we get into the next topic of torsion fields. Torsion fields uh, are something that most of us, even those of us taking physics in college, uh, were never exposed to. And uh, it's a missing link in uh, the unified field theory, in my view. We're going to talk about um, uh, an English uh, scientist, Maxwell, and the field equations that he had developed uh, in the uh, late 1900s, early 20th century, and how those equations were subsequently changed and all of the uh, information and, and equations regarding spin, which is torsion, uh, were taken out of his equations. And that impact on Einstein's uh, E is equal to mc squared. And then we're finally going to talk about Nassim Haramein and uh, his colleague Elizabeth Rauscher and the work that they have done over the years uh, to reconstruct Maxwell's equations using spin and torsion uh, to come up with a new unified field theory. I know a lot of this sounds pretty tough, but we're going to be doing all this without equations, or if we have some, it's going to be very, very minimal. So this is designed for, uh, you know, the social science humanities major as much as it is for the science major. Then we're going to start talking about pyramids and other objects uh, in the world as passion, uh, passive torsion generators. Once we, now that we know what ta uh, torsion fields are, we're going to look at the research of a Russian scientist, Nikolai Kozarev. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, research of Dr. Alexander Golod, who we've studied extensively already. And we're also going to look at the research of Dr. Ibrahim Karim, who has studied pyramids and other uh, forms uh, and has developed a new science which he calls biogeometry. Next, we're going to talk about sacred geometry pyramids and cones and, and their ability uh, to be the best passive torsion generators. Uh, then we're going to finally get into the topic of sacred geometry. And we're going to talk about phi. Uh, we're going to talk about the platonic solids, phi spirals, and something that I uh, forgot to put on this list, but I'll uh, be exploring it, is uh, the importance of the sphere in uh, the creative process. Uh, that really comes in, into part six. The torus is the basis of creation. Uh, we'll talk about that process, real world examples of the torus, uh, the pyramid, and the torus. Uh, and then we're going to end up talking about geometry, vibration, and higher dimensions, uh, spherical energy structures in the cosmos and their importance, and finally, ways of harnessing torsion waves and consciousness. So it's a pretty ambitious project. Uh, it's going to take some time to get through all this, but it's going to be important to get some grounding in the basics. So we're starting with the, the next uh, uh, series, a uh, mini series of this uh, group is going to be about ether and what it's all about and some really neat scientific experiments that prove that the ether does exist. I hope this has been helpful and especially if you have friends who are interested in this kind of scientific research, please uh, tell them about our website, onlypvcpyramids.com and the series that we're going to be doing on YouTube, Only PVC Pyramids. Hope this is helpful, and as always, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.